tell me a little bit about this uh, antenna that I'm just about to scan over here. This is the first time that you guys have brought your KA band antenna to the expo, right, for uh, the Global Express service. Yes, it is, Mary. This is the first time we're showcasing the actual hardware that we're going to be flying on, uh, on airplanes. Um, what you see here is the antenna which we'll be using for our air transport uh, products. We have a, a companion antenna um, which would be more appropriate for mounting in the tail of the business jets, which is the other part of our market. Oh, yeah. So, um, as I say, this is, the, this is the real hardware. This is it. Now, what is the next step then for this uh, antenna? You got a, This is your prototype. It testing That's obviously right. starts? That's right. So, where we are right now with the program is we're getting ready to go to the critical design review towards the end of this year. That's a big milestone for us. That's when we freeze the, uh, the entire design. The sort of model that you see here we'll be using for things like accelerated life testing and engineering integration activities. Um, so, we're going to be end of the year with a rush about both in terms of what we're doing with the hardware and and getting that through CDR, Inmarsat will be launching their first satellite, so we're, uh, we're looking forward to a very busy uh, 2014 as we, as we start to integrate the whole system and bring it together for flight trials. It seems like uh, you've kept things fairly compact in terms of profile for this antenna, yeah? Yes, we have. Um, obviously, um, uh, that's a big part of um, uh, aerodynamics and, and having the antenna fit in a, uh, and an appropriate size radome is a big part of, of the design. Uh, we're working closely with uh, a number of the major uh, airframe OEMs uh, around that, so um, that work as well. I think we announced that um, back in April that we signed a technical services agreement with Boeing, and uh, obviously that's uh, the, the design of the antenna is a is a um, is an activity that we we work we work with Boeing and, and and other airframers to make sure that what we're coming up with is going to fit on the airplane and fit on the airplane seamlessly. And, so the timeline then uh, everything remains on track, which it must is. be great, great news for those who are waiting for Global Express. We're delighted about that. It's, yeah. uh, it's on schedule um, and um, it's going to be, uh, we really do think it's going to be a, uh, a revolution in, uh, in aircraft connectivity when we take this to market. Once again, early uh, early 2015 uh, will be uh, will be black label in production. We'll be doing flight trials in late 2014 when the when the satellite constellation is up. So uh, that'll be something to be worth watching for. And what about the uh, development on the radome? Where does that all stand? So uh, we have, as well as the antenna itself, of course, we have the rest of the avionics. Um, Honeywell will be bringing a, a, a radome and attachment uh, kit to the market, um, and we'll be investing in a number of STCs for. Uh, for key aircraft, um, that, so that's the other part of the package that we have here. Uh, in addition, the air free, airframe uh, airframers will have some of their own uh, have some of their own ideas in terms of what they're doing with radomes. But we will have a package uh, of radome and attachments which will support STCs. Okay, fantastic. And then, kind of more broadly, if you could kind of predict where things are going in in the IFEC world, there is obviously a lot of excitement around connectivity, and I'd have to imagine that. That would probably be the main theme of the show this this uh, year. That connectivity uh, is is yeah. going to come to virtually every commercial aircraft, and passengers now require connectivity. Um, would you agree? And, and where would you see things shaping out in the next five years? Yeah, I think that it's probably fair to say we've only scratched the surface in terms of the demand for connectivity, mm -hmm. the expectation for connectivity. Um, Honeywell has just published a survey, uh, which I think supports that mm -hmm. that view. Um, we see connectivity. Um, and the expectation, the demand, the use of it growing probably more like a hockey stick than anything else. It's not going to be linear. Um, the more people um, use it, the more they're going to want it, uh, the more they will do with it. Um, and of course, that's from our perspective, that's fundamentally why Honeywell decided to get into the KA band business because we looked at, at that market and we saw something which was just going to explode and we wanted to make sure that we were working with a system, working with Inmarsat that was going to be sized, was going to be big enough to support that growth and demand. Do you ever see a day where the airframers might just ultimately decide to offer connectivity as a natural part of the aircraft, kind of like avionics, not even an add-on or a bolt-on, but building it as part of the aircraft and, and it delivered uh, as part of the aircraft? I think there's going to come a day when um, the, the idea of getting on an aircraft that doesn't have connectivity would be like going to a hotel that didn't have internet. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to do it. It's mm -hmm. going to be like a seat. Uh, it's just simply going to be an expectation. Um, and the idea that you won't have connectivity on an aircraft will go from a bit of a novelty today 
to the idea of not having it will be simply bizarre in the future. One of the things that I find really interesting in, in, about the messaging from Imarsat and, and Honeywell is the fact that in the aftermarket, a global solution might in fact even uh, prove more value uh, on an aircraft and, and, and then may have some level of value uh, to, uh, to the lessers even particularly um, because they can move that aircraft around all over the world and, and it not be an issue whereby if it's a regional solution, uh, yes. then it becomes an issue. I think that's really interesting messaging. Do you think that uh, in the coming years, uh, the lessors may start picking up on this themselves. Well, certainly the trend, uh, if, you, if you look at what's happened in this industry over the years, uh, you see a lot of trends, uh, just like airlines now standardize on one or two types of mm -hmm. airplanes, uh, very focused on the economics. They don't like carrying different types of systems for different, for different applications, so I think that's a, a trend which is very definitely going to play out. Um, but uh, to your broader point before, I think you know, our view of the world is connectivity and the, uh, the, the existence of connectivity on an airplane is an asset. It's, 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 it's not going to be viewed as a cost, it's going to be an asset. Um, and um, it's, it's that simple trying to, you know, trying, to, um, uh, trying to operate an airplane or even sell an airplane that doesn't have connectivity on it, it's going to be tough. Pretty tough. As, as Patrick Brownlee said the other day, it's uh, connectivity is like air. <laughs> it's the um, it's it's like IT, isn't it? It's the uh, it's the uh, it's the water in which we swim. It's the air that we breathe. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, of course, ultimately down the road, especially as Internet of Things takes off, I think things are going to get even more interesting. Um, as as perhaps in the aviation world, we start seeing parts of the aircraft, uh, you know, providing data, uh, parts of the aircraft talking to each other, and then you're going to need a pipe to get that data down to the ground. I know there's some levels, obviously, of real-time health monitoring going on right now. Now, uh, 787, for example, with the engines, but uh, there's a lot more you can do at a broadband pipe in terms of operational benefits. Yep. Are you guys kind of keeping a very close eye on, on those items too? Very much so. As you know, this uh, those elements of this have been spoken about for years. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at a presentation that was done at, at, uh, at this show 10 years ago, just the other day, and you can run down the list of applications and you see it's exactly the same thing we're talking about today. Both why you know why hasn't it come to fruition so far and the answer is well three things one is the the amount of data generated on the airplane has changed fundamentally new airplanes like the a380 and the 787 produce an absolute torrent of data mm. but the other thing of course is that we haven't had a pipe of both big enough and inexpensive enough to be able to take the data off the airplane so that's what the ka band systems do for you and um the uh, their role we talk about their role a lot in terms of passenger communications their role in aircraft operations and um, uh, in servicing the cockpit, not safety services, but right. um, uh, but but other services Augmenting and applications the connectivity for the, will for be the as important yeah. as or more important than the passenger applications long term. And that's one of the things which ultimately you ask the question about, does this stuff ever become standard? That's what will drive it when that day happens. And then you guys will be well positioned because then you'll have a nose to tail solution. That's always possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.